Right, good morning everyone. So welcome to Global Cup at Home Education Online Challenge 2020. So today uh, I'm glad for all of you to attend this online classroom for particularly open platform. So today the category we will talk um, kind of custom built robots uh, will be in this category. Right, so I'm Jeffrey. So I will do my introduction about myself. So I am um, the organizer, the one, and um, we are very proud to sponsor. We have three sponsors um, that I have our introductory session. Uh, they are massive. The open platform, uh, we are proud to have a mass work and Jupiter robot that will work closely with us in this uh, classroom development. So they will actually excel content uh, that uh, some of their products or some of their um, development that can help our community. Uh, so those tools are free for you to use. For example, like MATLAB uh, offer free uh, license that you can use. And also Jupyter Robot later on, uh, I will invite them to show you a new tool, the VirtualBox uh, image that they produce to help a beginner to start uh, development. So I now would like to learn from um, Jupyter Robot. Can you please like introduce yourself? Okay. Hello everyone. Good morning, Jeffrey. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name morning. is uh, uh, Nice to meet you. Uh, Jupiter Robot is a hardware robot uh, developed uh, company, and it's also uh, it's our honor to support Twenty. So uh, we are very glad to uh, help all the developer and uh, team to uh, uh, develop your own, own program and uh, software. We also set some uh, environment to help us help uh, all the uh, participants to uh, perform your program. So I will show you our environment to the uh, if you want to use our robot to perform your uh, to perform your program, uh, and we will uh, show it in our company. So you can use uh, the gazebo world to uh, navigation and uh, mapping uh, of your robot. So uh, after you have uh, finished your uh, programming, you can and the robot. You can see a robot in the environment, and uh, we can help you to uh, take the record of the video. So you can take part in the video challenge. Uh, we also have to we set up uh, we build a a virtual virtual system to help uh, help the participants to de develop the uh, program because uh, I think um, robot to program so uh, we will try our best. Thank you. Right. Thanks, David. Thank Thanks you for the nice uh, introduction. So um, I'm very glad, and on behalf of Robocop and Education, we appreciate um, the sponsorship of Jupiter Robot. They not just um, support us in terms of the organization, but also support us in terms of uh, technical. Uh, David had mentioned about like helping the teams to actually run the code on the robots itself uh, for the video challenge. So that is the technical support that we, we newly designed for this event uh, due to the Kuya robots. So uh, this is a very good opportunity for people and teams to to continue development, right? And, and I think like this is a very good support from, from the investors uh, start the content today. Okay. Right, you can come to this um, online challenge, particularly the class for online challenge uh, over here. So you hit now and you can find both slides, the first hour and also the second hour. And um, video will be recorded. So here on after finish the session, I will process that from Thank you. Okay, so what kind of development you can do in this uh, event, in this challenge? Uh, so particular what is the overall service robot development in the perspective of uh, the development in this competition. So I will start with the system setup. So I will tell you like roughly what kind of um, technical development you will be involved. Uh, we will show you some tools that you can set up your development system. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, that is a delay. So uh, I expect some delay in between. Yeah, but we will try to break it into like, uh, the system setup um, explanation. Then for the second session, I will also how to start development with ROS. Okay, so that is uh, always the first thing that um, all the teams will want to know uh, before they can start. Uh, so just a quick link. So uh, I guess all of you know about this, but uh, just in join or come into this room. So this is a particular, uh, or just in case that you like log out suddenly, the website to get these materials and all the information over here and on our Facebook page. The link, mission, and detail is over here, and all the cloud is located over here. Right. So just a reminder on privacy. So the video currently is uh, recording. So everything will be recorded and we will publish this online in various channels, whether it's a Facebook, our social media, or our websites, and also other uh, announcements and publications that we will do uh, with our sponsors and so on. So please uh, be reminded to, uh, keep, to keep your privacy. So anything you want to ask us, uh, please uh, put down your message in the chat, group chat so that um, we can respond to you. Right? And try not to turn on your webcam throughout the whole session. Right, thank you. Okay, so um, I will spend about 20 minutes or less uh, to glance through these um, materials. So I put down quite a lot of materials as compared to the class in, in um, 
Tuesdays is because like I actually try to combine two classes into one uh, due to the, the timeline of this uh, event. So we want to like speed up a lot of things. But uh, I will, although I'm, I'm skipping through most of the, the, the slides after this, but um, you can actually review back. And there are actually many, um, for example, videos that you can, I, I'm not going to run all the videos, so uh, the session. So yeah, you can browse this uh, information later on. So I'll start with what kind of um, research and development that you can do with service robots. So um, the first thing you want to, while you are learning how to develop, you need to start to think about the team. So we have three teams. It's either you do the competition uh, task or you do the uh, open scenario, which is follow the final rules. Or the third one is like you want to have, you might saw some um, um, example of service robot now currently serving in the front line together with all our frontliners uh, for the COVID-19 um, developmentally designed for, for this uh, event so that we can, okay. So apart from learning how to develop your robot, you might also want to think uh, what kind of robot you want to build, okay. Because that is will be the team for your video and also for your finals, okay. So uh, that is the aim and also direction for everyone. So over here, I will share with you like what kind of development we can do with service robots to give you some ideas. This robot component can be divided into this um, few components. So we have the uh, uh, the mouth and the ears, which is um, to listen and to speak. So that is for the human robot interaction. So human robot interaction is very important in service robot because service robot is designed to interact with not just the technical personnel, but also for normal people. Because you are going to put in your house, you are going to put in hospital, school, and so on. And uh, that will be, how to say, that will be uh, interact with the audience. Okay, right. So I, I think I forgot to turn off my webcam. <laughs> right, okay. So that's it. Right, then um, the second one that um, also very important, so these are all the very important um, components, is like the eye. So you need the robot to able to perceive the surrounding. Okay, so who the robot encounter, uh, how is the surrounding, so how the robot want to navigate autonomously throughout the environment. So uh, the robot needs to be able to see the environment, like what are the obstacles, where's the room, what are the objects that you, you want uh, the robots to, to, to find, and so on, right? Then the third one is navigation. So the robot needs to be mobile. It needs to move around in order to carry out its duty most of the time, okay? Most of the time. Uh, even like you did the information kiosk, you also want the robot to like move around, approach the customer or user and um, do to perform the task. So autonomous navigation for the robots is very important in, in service robot, okay? Then object manipulation, arm, right? We have a simple example on the arm that you can do some manipulation. You can carry a, a, a small bottle and so on. And this is actually to add the physical uh, functionality to robot because uh, or else the, the robot will can only provide information uh, in terms of, um, in term of uh, uh, can only provide support in terms of information. Then that will be something like a mobile kiosk. But um, more than mobile kiosks, a robot actually have the body have the body that can do more than that. So it can actually provide uh, communication and also assistance in terms of some physical uh, action. Right. So this is the arm. And lastly, of course, the brain. So over here for the service robot development, we focus a lot on AI development, and also we focus a lot on um, cloud computing because we want to reduce a lot of um, load computing load on board. So we always we have our robot always connected to the cloud uh, for additional. Uh, computing powers and so on. So these are the five um, components that you can start to uh, put in your mind that you need to see how you want to develop these components to put them together and create some application. I run through uh, this, uh, this uh, module that um, you can see what kind of uh, development we have. So for example, this mouse and ears, so it's the speech interaction. So uh, the technical uh, development in this module will be more focused on how to do speech synthesis, back to speech, uh, speech recognition, uh, online or offline. And also we have this face expression that uh, currently we are in development, right? So we have the display that you can put in, uh, you can put up some uh, expression or you can put like even emoticon and so on. So currently our teams actually try to uh, improve the communication between the robots and also the human. Right. right, then for the visual perception, the eye. So this is for the robot to able to perceive the environment. Okay, so from here, we do um, real-time objects. So we have um, uh, development in terms of like human gesture, human uh, motion detections, and so on. So you can see we use a lot of all these things. Uh, very uh, advanced tools from computer science uh, to make the robot able to understand the environment and also the people that interact with the robots. Okay, so this one is for the face recognition uh, by uh, machine learning of uh, big data because you are going to recognize people that are not in your database before. So how you want to recognize um, all these people and their features, for example, like gender, there are uh, some very unique features like the hair color, the color of the dress and so on. So a lot of things um, 
uh, can be done in this uh, visual perception. Right, and some research. Okay, so this is for your reading. So if you wonder what kind of research we can do, so uh, this is one of the uh, research that we do in our teams that um, we use our deep learning techniques to make the robot right. Then we have uh, the autonomous um, function, uh, nice tool in terms of um, navigation for us. Like we are explanation. Of course, we have other robots as well. We have um, the Martino, which is um, uh, my colleague, okay, Luca, actually um, developing the, the Martino platform, uh, which more focus on how to build the robot from scratch. So you're going to build the robots like get the motors, the encoders and everything and put them together. So that is from a very uh, different way of um, development. So if you want to know all the low level uh, uh, system, how to produce those things, yeah, you can start with Martino. So Martino actually the cost is very low. So uh, can have more people that can build the robot system itself. Then over here, I'm introducing, I'm using the robot tool base. So it's actually to, to, to uh, provide you a very uh, nice, well-packaged um, platform that you can start your development uh, right after you take the robot out of the box. So it comes with all the software that you need to build the map and also to navigate around from point A to point B. Uh, the tutorials, everything are well prepared on the uh, ROS wiki and so on. So these are all the tools that is already available and you can easily obtain. Uh, to get an uh, autonomous um, platform for your office. We also have the ARM, uh, a simple one that we have this uh, develop um, actual uh, manipulator research by using this simple ARM. And also when we attach on a mobile platform, you actually have a very nice uh, research base, development base for mobile uh, manipulation. Mobile manipulation is kind of like a new direction in um, in service robot and also in uh, industrial robots ARM. So it's because like uh, we actually extend from the uh, ARM calculation to include also uh, the base movement. So it actually expand the working boundary or the working envelope of the arms and, and yeah, it makes a lot of things interesting in terms of research and development. Right, so uh, this is one of the um, research work that's done in my group. So we try to combine uh, the development in terms of the solving the ARM uh, grabs uh, procedure, we come up with some algorithm to tackle the very narrow and also very messy uh, environment in, in a, for example, in the living room, right, for a tidying task or something like that. Okay, and lastly for the brain, a lot of like, just now I already introduced and also you can see we use a lot of um, deep learning techniques that we need to train, uh, use a lot of AI techniques for that and also for vision also we use a lot of AI techniques and over here also uh, in our team we use a lot of cloud computing to, to reduce the burden and to shift all the computing to the cloud, right. Then we also try to use simulator to speed up the learning. Right? So over here we use a virtual robot, uh, it's something similar like, um, so over here we use a sequence um, system and also we have the gazebo, which is a simulator as well. So we can use all these um, simulation platform to, to uh, obtain uh, or to simulate the interaction between human robots and uh, from this development, we can actually extract a lot of interaction data that is uh, useful for our skill training and so on. Okay. So we have how we can actually collect more database from this platform and the robot able to learn and become better as uh, the data increases, right? And also, yeah, um, particularly at, in, in this case, we don't have a physical robot, um, so this virtual robots model to actually do some interaction. So this can actually still, and also we can collect a lot of data. So environment from the simulator, also we are using the like, for example, VR, AR uh, devices to actually have some immersive um, experience for the user to have some more realistic um, interaction with the robots. Right, okay. So um, just now I show you all the uh, research and development that can be done on service robots. So now let's put this thing on a more practical side. So how does it look like if we want to develop such uh, development, right? Okay, so over here, I introduced you our platform that we use and also develop in our activities. So that's how I show you about, uh, I, I mentioned about Martino. So that is another platform that uh, widely used in our uh, community. And over here, I'm going to show you a Turtlebot 2 and also the extension from Turtlebot 2 that um, you can use it for this development, right? So this is the uh, AI and service robot, um, do it yourself. So you can actually, yeah, by creating everything by your own to learn and also develop for AI and service robot. Right. So over here, I'll show you this. Oops. Okay. So over here, uh, we extend the Turtlebot to know like the Turtlebot 2 is a very nice uh, platform, mobile base from ROS. So ROS actually introduced this in 2012 or even a bit earlier. Yeah, to have a platform for people to learn ROS. But mainly this Turtlebot 2 is uh, for navigation, all right? So it's a mobile platform. It's something like Roomba. But um, we found that this platform can be extended to add more functionality. For example, you add the speech, you add the vision, like all the five 
component that I say just now you can put on this platform. So we extend this. So over the year in RoboCup at Home Education, we actually accumulate a lot of development on this platform and eventually it becomes a platform that you can use it for service robot, service robotics like over here. Okay, so we try to extend, we have a module. So over here in the following class, we, I will explain part by part the modules that you can add on this platform in order to extend the functionality in terms of service robot application development. Right, so these are some of the specifications. Uh, use mostly those kind of components that you can obtain easily. That is widely available, even for the sensors and, and actuators and so on. None of them are actually, um, uh, I mean, some component that is not, uh, that belongs more on industrial grade components. So uh, we are using, trying to use consumer grade uh, component that can easily obtain by the general public uh, to build up these robots. The purpose is to ease um, the beginner uh, teams or teams that just started or teams that are, who are not really uh, familiar with um, all these uh, resources that they can start uh, the development easily with all the components they can obtain easily from around them and also with uh, the cost web that we uh, offer. We open in our on our website that you can, you can find all those learning resources and tutorial. So combined with all these um, uh, component, you can actually build out your own version of service robot. So, and that will be the robots that you can use for our open platform challenge. Okay, so these are a few variations. So uh, we actually encourage you because the difference between open platform and standard platform is for open platform, not just, uh, not just on the algorithm, but we also focus on the robot design. So uh, we actually want to encourage people to actually expand the hardware to have different configurations and so on in order to optimize the design for a particular application, right? So on the hardware design as well, uh, is our focus in open platform. Okay, then over here, like um, maybe in the next few uh, example, I'm going to show you this um, personal intelligent open robot platform which uh, we combine all the components together, we put up. And this, currently this uh, is uh, something that we have optimized uh, based on our previous um, a few years of um, uh, experience uh, in this uh, TurtleBot 2 extension uh, development. So we try to put this thing together. Uh, so it have all the five components that I just mentioned just now, human robot interaction, vision, robot platform, arm, and also the brain. Okay, so. Uh, combine all these things, we have this open platform. So this is uh, open platform. Um, we are going to like uh, make this thing more structural after this uh, by, uh, by by developing a, a more, how to say, structured um, software and hardware package for this. Uh, we are on, on this direction. So uh, hopefully like this will be benefit and also like speed up your development as well. Right. So a lot of uh, the example later on, I will also refer to this. Uh, I'll refer to basically this and, and third about they are like comp compatible because the base uh, is, is the, uh, they are the, both the base are different, uh, are the same actually, right, okay. Okay, and these are all the open resources uh, that uh, we offer, uh, open courseware, our online number and so on. So we, we have all the modules like speech, how you want to do speech, vision, and this will be, uh, we, will, we will introduce this one by one as our example uh, in our coming class. Okay, and as a comparison for the online class, uh, we will focus more on, so just in case that you wonder like now, you're not able to obtain the hardware, you're not able to get the physical robot. So how are you going to start development? So for this online class and also this online challenge, our purpose is to enable you to continue all this learning and development, even though you don't have the physical robots. So that is the idea actually. So just now what I said with all the physical robots, it belongs to our previous hands-on workshops that we do try to do. Although now the situation is not easy for us to do physical workshop, but we try to do the same thing with our online classroom. So you will have very similar learning experience. The content that you learn will be very similar, but you can just do everything with, uh, the, with the facilities that you can obtain at home. So just a normal laptop, a webcam, speaker, mic, and that's all. That's it, right? So with just that. And then the rest, for example, like the mobile platform, uh, the arm manipulator, we'll try to show you in the mock simulation, right? Okay. And then also MATLAB actually, uh, it's not open source, but uh, MATLAB actually sponsors us by all the teams that join these activities, they can actually ask for a free license, okay? So you can ask for a free license key uh, from MATLAB, <coughs> from MathWorks, sorry, to get a MATLAB free license for the development in this, um, in this event, okay? <coughs> okay. So now let me uh, tell you some hardware and also software configuration that you can start to like plan out for your development. So 
um, the very basic thing is like you have a laptops, so you just need to prepare a laptops that ready for development, okay? And it require the Linux PC system, okay? So another one is like just in case you've got extra laptops or <coughs> sorry, you got remote uh, that can use it for remote PC. So you're gonna have two systems. You don't want to mess up your 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 Windows system or your Mac system for work. So if you have another PC, then you can configure another PC that work as uh, your robots and you can connect them through TV work. Okay, so that is a second configuration. Then the third configuration is like uh, you try to have both uh, running on Linux and they connect uh, as a master and secondary uh, PC. So that is uh, the second configuration. But this configuration maybe is quite complicated to, to start with. So for this class, I will focus on how to build everything with the first configuration. So your laptop will act like your robots. So just in case for the teams that after you develop, you might wonder, so how are you going to produce a robot video? So uh, you are going to develop everything on your laptops and the laptop is, is actually part of your robot. So later on, you are going to use this structure and submit the code as like this uh, to our sponsors and to evaluate if let's say your development uh, up to the standards that, that they are willing to sponsor you uh, to help you run your code on their robots. So yeah, it will be very similar fashion, right? So that is uh, the development uh, architectures that, that we recommend you to follow in uh, robot development later on for the videos and, and so on. But we will talk more about this uh, setup and also what are the requirements for you to develop in order for your code to have a chance to run off one of our uh, sponsors um, um, platform for the, uh, for the robot support. That one we will discuss more uh, later on. Okay, right. Okay, so I'm going to skip through this because um, I want to introduce Jupyter Robot to, to, to show them the tools that they can replace all this. Okay, but I will quickly run through. If let's say you have a laptop that you want to use it for this development, you need to have this recommended uh, software uh, environment, right? So you need to have a Ubuntu 0.4 uh, LTS version so you can get this and you can run it. So the first thing is like whether you want to install this system on your exist tutorial over here, to install a dual boot system, right? Or you can use a virtual box, right? Right. You can install a virtual box and install the Ubuntu on your virtual box, run uh, parallel or on top of your Windows system. Okay. But you can actually uh, do this thing like I mean, like you can use this, and later on you need to install like something that uh, I will discuss more in the second half. I mean, the, the next session, right? The next hour, a ROS and all the component, for example, like the board and so on. So this whole process, uh, if you want to do it yourself, all these things uh, by using the virtual box, the image provided uh, by our sponsors, the robots that they are going to introduce that tools to use after this, right? Okay. So also again, the code. So this also will be can uh, is also done after you have the image from the Peter robot. Okay. And also, I recommend you to start using Git and GitHub to manage your code. Okay. I will explain more this thing in the second half session. Okay. Right. So the assignment. So uh, the last things um, before I conclude this uh, session and I pass this to Jupyter Robots to uh, show you the image that they, they, they are going to offer you for free, <laughs> right, for the use. Uh, what important in this uh, first hour is like you need to have a system for uh, with Ubuntu 16.04 and also ROS Kinetic install get ready in order for us to move to the next class because uh, starting from next class which is next week we will start uh, uh, sorry next hour <laughs> right so for the next hour but of course starting from next week because you need time small to, to prepare this so uh, ROS development so, but start, starting now, next week we are going to start develop application speech mission and so on so you need this uh, infrastructure in order for you to follow the uh, progression of the class Right, so with that, I think I come to the end of, uh, yes. So I'll pass this session um, temporarily to, to Jupyter Robot to take over uh, the screen and they will show you, I would like to invite um, Jupyter Robot to show you uh, the tools uh, for the virtual box. Right, so um, David, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, so you can switch the, 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 the screen to your screen. Uh, okay, uh, could you please uh, tap the Download the link of the virtual box um, image on the in the chat. I mean, um, and tap the, you... download the link of the software. So the we can download the image of the virtual box system. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah.
I can hear, but I can't see the link. Yes. Okay. So I need to check if my okay. Uh, maybe you need some time to download the uh, the link, the image of the virtual box, and uh, the the uh, most uh, same uh, image. And uh, from now, I will show you how to set up the environment and the software. The first uh, first of all, we need to use uh, we use uh, virtual box from the Oracle company uh, to work for the virtual system. And the virtual box, and uh, you can download from the website of the uh, virtual box. Actually, we have uh, also support the VimVL VimVL uh, workstation player uh, to use our. Uh, uh, sorry for the interface of the Chinese words. Uh, <laughs> never mind. I just uh, click for the next step. This means next step, and you can choose the position of the uh, of your of your computer to set up the virtual. Virtual box software. So this is the position of your uh, of your own computer. I use a recommend uh, link for the uh, <clears throat> and this is a for, uh, you can keep the recommend selection and uh, just click the next and uh, yes and uh, this means set up. So we need a few few minutes to set up the virtual box software. So what about software? The version is 6.1.6. Uh, okay, now we can, after the setup, we can run. This means run after setup the uh, virtual box. So we can click here, means finish. So I will show the interface of the virtual box. So uh, after you finish setup, you can see this. Uh, a uh, virtual box manager. I think this means manager. And we can use uh, config, control, and the help. Uh, first of all, we need to uh, add the extension package. We use uh, uh, this means global setting. Uh, sorry, you can see display global pr preference. Global preference. Uh, <laughs> normal, hotkey. Uh, update language display network extension and uh, proxy extension here uh, we i will remove the original part of this okay uh, this is what you will see after you set up and uh, you can click here this means extension extension package you can use this add and uh, choose uh, from the this means desktop from desktop this one uh, Oracle VMware, uh, Oracle VM virtual box extension package, and the click here is open, and uh, oh, this means uh, install, uh, and you need to scroll to the end of this uh, document and uh, press here agree. Uh, uh, confirm. Okay, so press okay. We have uh, finished the uh, extension package install, and then we need to input. This means input. This means output. We can use this input uh, to select the uh, file. I choose file from the desktop. Um, most are same uh, 64 bit means 64 bit system, and the date date number is uh, April 21 last night. And uh, we can choose this one. Uh, I want to say this is also work for the WinVail works, workstation player. So we can click here, uh, open, and uh, oh. I can click the next button. It's uh, too big. Uh, I show 125 percent of the. Uh, so give me few sec. Give me few minutes. I will change. So few seconds. We will change the display method. Okay. Input. I will choose uh, from the. Okay, same as uh, what we have done. Next, 
Oh. I will restart the, the, the input method. So uh, wait a few minutes. Okay. Okay, I think it will be okay. And the input, choose the image and uh, open next. So this, uh, you can see, you can find the uh, config of our uh, sim system, a simulation system. Uh, for example, we have a, a processor, CPU, we have a two CPU setting. And for the memory, we use uh, eight. Uh, we use eight G uh, for the memory. And uh, uh, this is the position where you uh, store, where you uh, use for your virtual system. So you can change this position to any any position you you want. Our system will use 20, 20 GB uh, hard disk uh, space for the virtual machine. Uh, Twenty GB. And uh, you can uh, you need to choose here. And uh, this means. Uh, uh, renew, renew, mark address for all adapter. The last one. So you can just remember use the last one. So and then input. So there will be few minutes. Ah, oh, that's one, one minute. So the speed is uh, determined by the performance of your computer. Just a bit, uh, one minute. So after the input, uh, you need to confirm uh, there, will, there will be no warning of your virtual system uh, before you start your virtual machine. The warning may be the reason of the size of the memory and the number of the CPU uh, because it's uh, depend on the hard hardware of your real computer. So if you use too much memory, that will, there will be a warning uh, to warn you to reduce the number of the memory setting. So uh, we can just uh, start our start. Let me start uh, the right uh, arrow. Mean uh, green arrow means the start. Hmm? So you can see another window. We can find the. VirtualBox uh, start like the real computer. You can change the size of the screen. Uh, you can just ignore the warning of the uh, Ubuntu system. Okay, now you can see the uh, Jupyter robot virtual system. So uh, I will introduce some. First of all, we need to confirm the network uh, connection of the virtual system. Uh, we can use this. This means uh, hardware, maybe. <laughs> hardware. This means a uh, CD, uh, the voice system, and this means the network and the USB device. This means the camera, and uh, we can we make can make sure that the uh, we click the. This means use the connection of the wire. So we can choose uh, from this one. This means the network. Uh, this means this means. The recommend selection is a bridge. Bridge the night, night night exchange master. Uh, the first one is night, and the second one is the bridge. Uh, we recommend you use bridge. This means that you, the the virtual system will get the real address from the DHCP server from your own computer, and we can make uh, check the connection information about this one. For example, this is the same the same as the real computer in in this network uh, information. Environment, I mean, and then we uh, need to make sure that we can input the device. Uh, I will show some uh, device to show you some device how to connect with the uh, uh, virtual system. Uh, the first one is the uh, camera. So I have two camera connected with this. Uh, I mean, real computer. Uh, the first one is the uh, uh, computer of the uh, computer of the notebook, and the second one is the uh, 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 camera of the com real computer. And this second one is the uh, uh, GoPro. GoPro camera. So I use this uh, 
this one. And then you can find, after you click, there will be a uh, mark bef before the camera you selected. So uh, I will show you the result of the selection. I will type some uh, command to, or even I can copy the command from the, uh, for example, the document to paste in the virtual system. And I will type the command. You can use, use, tab, use the tab key to uh, faster your input. Now I will show the image. Now will be, yeah, okay, it's work. Okay, this is a uh, image from the, my notebook and uh, we connect this uh, web camera to the uh, visual system, okay. Have you control C to stop the programming. And uh, the second one, we, I will show you the, I will show you the joystick. I will show you the joystick, the logic, uh, tank F uh, F seven one zero. I will use this uh, receiver to plug this in the USB port, and we will find uh, the USB. Okay, this is we have five, and after I plug in, you hear the sound. We have can, we can find this uh, six and the last one is uh, the last one is the uh, receiver of the joystick. Okay, and uh, I will show you the result of the uh, joystick control of in of the control the robot in the gazebo environment. Uh, the first of all, we need to confirm the input. Uh, number of the joystick, we can use this uh, command to list the information about the port. So we can see we have uh, three, GS1, ZX0, and ZS2. So we, we don't know which one is our uh, receiver. So we, we can use this method. We can unplug from the virtual system and we use this command again. And we can find we lost the JS2. So if we connect with the USB receiver again, we can find we use, uh, sorry. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Plug again. Plug in and then plug out. So we have GS2. So uh, we can confirm that the joystick use a GS2 port number. And then we can uh, start the gazebo environment. Um, first of all, we need to confirm the launch file about the sighting of the port. So never mind, you will uh, have the opportunity to start how to change the config of the uh document so here oh, okay so js2 so we join gazebo So we can see we are working, uh, we are starting the gazebo environment.
maybe it will need uh, more time uh, for the first uh, start. Hmm? Oh, we can proceed to and then run again. It's not mine, it will be okay. Okay. So if you have some problem, just uh, shut down and uh, restart again. And then you see there is a turtle boat in this environment. Uh, next, I will use a joystick to control to control the turtle boat in this uh, environment. Uh, the warning is means there's been no uh, false feedback of, uh, for the joystick. Never mind, it will be okay. And uh, I show you the video, uh, the camera. And then you can see that uh, if I use the joystick, uh, I can. Uh, I will start again. Robot is moving. Can you see that? The robot is back. Hmm? Is move? Uh oh. Right again. Okay, something like that, something like that. Sorry for, <laughs> for this one. And uh, we just control C to close the gazebo. So that's all. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Hi, thank you. Can you get me back? Uh, I'm yeah, not yeah, sure yeah, because, yeah. Uh, uh, because of the switch of the screen, I mean, like we, we have another party in the Zoom to share the screen. Actually, uh, I don't know why, but Facebook um, streaming got cut. So oh, Facebook Live ended. Okay, this is something unexpected, but um, yeah, I, I've learned this. So we will figure it out how. But at least uh, all of you in this session, you can still see the screen from Jupiter Robots, and uh, they really show you very nice um, demonstration on how to uh, use the virtual box image that provided by them with all the information and also all the tools that you need, right? Uh, including like the uh, Ubuntu system as an OS. So right after you put in the uh, image, uh, you run it. You able to. You already have a full. Uh, Ubuntu system and also ROS, everything installed, and also all the other tools and also software package already nicely installed and configured well for you. So I think it's a good tool. But maybe um, pardon me for the late notice because I didn't inform Jupiter on for this session much earlier, so they couldn't have enough time to change the interface to English. But uh, we will sort this thing out. Uh, okay, so for you guys. Um, you just uh, need to refer to the video for the steps and also you can download the, the image file from the Google Drive links that I share in the group chat. Okay, uh, we will try to fix all the, for example, the interface and all the sharing things and everything. Later on, we will publish this as an announcement. I will I'll make an official announcement from um, our Facebook page so that you can, uh, later on, you can still refer back. Okay, but now if you want to try, please download from the 
uh, Google Drive, okay? But it is very big because like the image itself is seven gigabyte. So it might take some time to download and hopefully you're able to do it. Uh, I, I guess I'm still okay with my Google Drive account. So you try to download it and, and try to use it. So if you have any uh, things you want to ask about this, please join our Facebook group and we will, we will try to uh, discuss with you if, if you find any problem. So um, now, um, okay, we're still quite on time uh, on our schedule. So now we already like come to the end of the first one hour session. So we will take a break uh, roughly about 10 minutes. Then we will come back uh, in 11. Okay, so okay, let's, let's make it 11.15, all right? So we will start back 11.15 for the second half of this uh, online classroom. Right, so we will start to mute and of course if you have any question you can still continue put on the group chat Then we will resume back uh, this session with the second half uh, content uh, at 11.15 Right, thank you